as I always say, there's always something on a boat that needs sorting out. So good morning, everybody. And this morning, problem with the engine. Um, decided to start up, see if I could generate a bit of electricity and heat up some water so I could have a shower. And uh, it cut out after about 30 seconds. Fortunately, I'm a member of the uh, Canal River Rescue, which um, is like the AA for motorists, you know, Automobile Association, for those of you abroad. Um, but it's a breakdown service for uh, boaters. Um, I phoned him up this morning. Within 15 minutes, the mechanic got back to me. Uh, he's on a job at the moment, but uh, he's going to give me a call soon. Let me know what time he's going to be on his way. So, uh, fingers crossed, it'll all be sorted out before too much longer. Uh, as long as there's nothing major wrong that is but um you know after never missing a beat for the year that i've had the boat the engine cut out this morning how lucky is that really when you think that uh over the last couple of days with the snow and the ice and the uh the, the bad conditions and everything that the day that the thaw sets in and it's much warmer um the engine decides to hang on for that so fingers crossed We'll have it sorted out. So I've just heard from uh, John from the River Canal Rescue and um, he's going to be here in an hour so that makes it about one o'clock this afternoon. Um, excellent, so all I can do now is sit and wait. Everything's a different size. And there goes John and we're all sorted. Good. And that's been the problem. This filter is completely full up with that sludge and that sludge is called diesel bug and uh, obviously the diesel needs cleaning so I'm going to run the diesel down a bit and then get some treatment from the Chandlers and mix it in and that kills it but uh, this is actually quite heavy full of sludge still we're all sorted now took him about an hour just over to sort it out so happy days so yeah diesel bug now diesel bug is a contamination of diesel fuel by microbes such as uh, bacteria or fungi now water can get into fuel um, by condensation, rainwater, uh, or absorption through the air. And uh, although I tried to prevent this by keeping the uh, diesel tank topped up rather than letting it uh, run down, um, it's pretty much inevitable that water is going to get in. Uh, I neglected to drain off the water through the water separator which is one of those things that I should have known about but uh, didn't give much thought to um, and um, fortunately the filter that was first in the line of three had caught the contamination and had just clogged up so um, eventually not enough fuel was getting through to the engine hence the fact that it would start but wouldn't uh, continue to run anyway it can be treated I'm gonna run the diesel tank down and uh, put in a treatment that pretty much kills the contamination and include uh, draining off water and sediment from the uh, the diesel line uh, on a more regular basis. <laughs> Topping up with water on a day when you can barely feel your fingers. <laughs> Character building Yeah, it's good clean fun. Where would you rather be, hey? <laughs> oh, the Bahamas might be nice. Well, cheers everybody. Um, we're going to talk tonight about the amount of rubbish that people dump into our canals and some of the most amazing finds that we get. So uh, pull up a chair, grab yourself a drink. Uh, you know what mine is. And... Uh, I'll give you my top 10 
uh, of things found in canals. Number one, plastic. Now, several times in the summer when I was cruising along, um, the boat was brought to a bit of a halt because a plastic sack, you know, the sort of thing that you see rubble or animal food stuffs or whatever, you know, those big plastic sacks, uh, got wrapped around the uh, propeller. And uh, it's, a, it's a common thing. As the propeller turns, it disturbs the sediment at the, uh, the bottom. Um, and it churns up some of the stuff that's lying down there so a lot of plastic gets thrown in there but it's not just plastic suck sacks and uh, plastic bags and things um, in Coventry Basin uh, somebody was telling me that uh, there were several sacks of rubbish that should have been put in recycling and uh, were just dumped straight over the side either from the bank or from a boat uh, floating around which is very unpleasant there's only one place that can go um, plastic bottles um, water bottles you name it there's lots and lots of plastic a lot of it floats past you as you're going along some people try to capture it but it's a bit of a losing battle there is so much gets thrown into the canals that it's becoming a, a major problem so number one on my list is uh, and this list is in no particular order but number one on my list is plastic lots of it there's lots of plastic at the bottom of our canal number two bicycles loads of people chuck bicycles away um, particularly in city centers you know if you're in London uh, and I imagine most cities around the world have got their equivalent but if you're in London we've got Boris bikes where you can pick one up from a stand and uh, just return it to another stand later on in the day uh, coin operated I believe loads of those loads of those end up in the uh, in the Thames or the canals near the Thames um, and it's a real problem uh, so and so that in Amsterdam when they uh, regularly drain their canals and uh, dredge them and so on Amsterdam is a the cycling capital of Europe certainly perhaps even the world uh, they reckon that uh, as an average each family has at least two bicycles and some many more than that loads of bikes in um, in Amsterdam and 15,000 of them get dredged out of uh, the Amsterdam canals each and every year 15,000 <laughs> that's rather a lot um, I don't think there's anything like the same number here but uh, any time that you're in an urban area um, passing through on a boat or going underneath the bridge or whatever uh, there's quite often something will scrape along the bottom of the the boat often it's a shopping trolley often it's a bicycle there's loads of the things down there number three on my list electrical appliances the canal often ends up as a graveyard for unwanted electrical appliances you can find um, computer consoles uh, computer monitors TV sets uh, old mobile phones um, all manner of electrical stuff um, in the rivers and um, in the Canal Saint Martin, which uh, runs off the River Seine in Paris, uh, they pulled up several um, vacuum cleaners uh, that had just got ditched in there, um, and all manner of plastic and domestic stuff uh, just gets ditched in the canals on a regular basis. Uh, again, that's a um, a hazard to boats as they're moving along. Uh, and they have to be dredged out eventually and they have to be disposed of so uh, uh, one of the most regular things that gets chucked in is unwanted electrical items fourth on my list um, glass glass bottles um, particularly anywhere near there's a pub or an area in um, maybe Birmingham or Liverpool or London or whatever that's near the canals where lots of young people uh, congregate 
loads of bottles of Budweiser and WKD and all sorts of trendy drinks. Don't know what to do with the bottle. Chuck it in the canal. It'll just sit there until somebody gets a chance to dredge it out again. Um, lots and lots of glass. And in that category, I'm also going to include the little capsules that you see around of, um, I think it's laughing gas. Um, often, if there's been a rave or a congregation of young people, um, they, <laughs> the, the sort of upper of choice these days are these little canisters that they uh, consume the contents of and then go off and have like a, a artificially induced good time. Now, look, I'm not going to cast any aspersions here and I'm not going to lecture anybody. But for a generation that tells us baby boomers that we've ruined the world and uh, we've been uh, fast and loose in the past and they're paying the price, uh, look, you're not getting an argument from me. I, I think, by and large, through ignorance, we, we, we have, in a way, um, not just us, but our forefathers before us ever since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. It's nice that we're waking up to some of the dangers of it. But before you get too involved in marching along with Extinction, extinction, <laughs> extinction Rebellion and berating us for the mess that we've left, can you at least spare a thought for the amount of mess that you're chucking in our canals at the moment? I mean, how dare you? Shopping trolleys. Shopping trolleys. There's loads of the damn things. Every time the uh, Canal and River Trust um, empty a particular part of the canal system to have a good clear up uh, or to carry out repairs, any time they do any dredging or any time that they're asked to remove obstructions to boats that are passing under um, bridges and so on, and I say bridges because when I first started, uh, somebody said, look, slow down at bridges if you're going to find anything that's going to foul the propeller and uh, cause damage to the hull of your boat. It's going to be by bridges where people have had the opportunity to hoik stuff in the canal. And uh, quite often we find ourselves going over the top of something that scrapes along the bottom. Uh, nine times out of ten, that's going to be a supermarket trolley that somebody has hilariously decided that the best place for that is at the bottom of a canal. Uh, where are we? Number six. Umbrellas. Umbrellas. Um, be they thrown away when the spokes break and they're really not any use anymore, or if they're blown out of people's hands as they're walking along a rainy old towpath um, on one of their walks. Who knows? But the astonishing thing is the sheer number of the damn things. They float along the top for a while until they get completely waterlogged and then just sink to the bottom. And any time I've seen photographs of uh, locks that have been dredged and uh, stretches of canal that have emptied, there's always an umbrella, at least one. Umbrellas, loads of the flipping things all over the place. Which brings me to number seven, weapons. Knives, machetes, um, meat cleavers, guns, all sorts of things. Um, many years ago, a young boy was uh, fishing in his local stretch of canal um, and quite excitedly turned to his dad and said, look what I've caught. It was a live hand grenade with the pin still in it. And uh, I don't know who dumps hand grenades in, um, but it just shows you. And um, I spoke about Amsterdam before, about the bikes. Um, every 15 years, they uh, drain the Canal Saint Martin in Paris um, to rid it of all the stuff that gets thrown in. It's a very bohemian, trendy area. Uh, and it gets completely overwhelmed. Well, in 2001, when they drained the canal, they uncovered two 75 millimeter German shells that had been fired on Paris during the uh, First World War and had sat there ever since, unexploded. 
Now, <laughs> when you're going along the canal and something scrapes along the bottom of the the, uh, the hull, you like to think it's a supermarket trolley. I mean, it makes your hair stand on end to think that that could be a 75 millimeter shell from a a, ger a German cannon that has uh, landed in the Seine and just sat there ever since waiting for somebody to come along so it can blow you out of the water. Um, there's also uh, guns that regularly when people dredge them up. That often uh, when people find stuff on the bottom of the canals it's not only the Canal and River Trust uh, draining a particular area or dredging. Um, it's quite a common thing to see people uh, magnet fishing and they bring up all sorts of things uh, often of value I guess mostly they're looking for money but um, they dredge up all sorts of weapons and um, the uh, obviously the police get involved if it's anything that's been involved in crime but um, if you're gonna choose the canal to ditch uh, a weapon that you've used in a crime it's worth remembering that uh, it may not be that long before somebody discovers it. Um, maybe a lot of the that have been there for a long time are going to be unusable, unusable but um, a lot of them are dredged up pretty quickly, particularly by anglers, um, magnet fishers and uh, and dredging. So uh, might not be as secure a place as you think but yeah weapons, lots of weapons of all sizes and descriptions um, and often just chucked in a canal an unusual one at uh, number eight safes safes yeah um, I think it was the River Lee just off of uh, the Regent Canal um, sort of area in uh, in London uh, when a, a work boat was going along it was a few years ago now but uh, maybe not that long ago a work boat going along suddenly hit some under water object couldn't go any further um, it completely held it up when the uh, maybe the British Waterways Trust or whoever they were at the time um, di uh, decided to dredge out whatever was obstructing this particular boat turned out to be a massive safe quite a big affair um, still intact, intact apart from the fact that the back had been blow torched off and whatever was in it had been taken out and then obviously <laughs> ditched in the canal so uh, that was almost certainly something that had been ditched there after a crime but also there are safes that get thrown in on a regular basis all manner of uh, sizes and so on um, and all sorts of things get found in them um, the, <laughs> the, the the usual idea is that uh, they've probably been part of some crime spree or something but I don't know maybe on other occasions it's to hide ill-gotten gains um, but quite often they find safes number nine money uh, one time uh, when the CRT were uh, emptying uh, a lock they found two bags of coins one pound coins and between the two bags there were something like a thousand of them a thousand pounds in pound coins sitting on the bottom of the canal who put them there you don't just lose that out your back pocket do you um, somebody quite deliberately threw them in uh, <laughs> so you can see the reward for people that go magnet fishing uh, they quite often find coins uh, some are historic uh, and maybe some are rare but uh, some are current <laughs> amazing stuff but yeah money lots of money gets thrown in the canals and uh, um, if you uh, look at um, Niagara Falls a section of Niagara Falls was drained and they found millions of coins where people have been throwing them into the the falls and making a wish uh, they all ended up getting churned up um, scraped along the the rocky bed and all ended up in one place uh, millions of them coins 
quite a regular occurrence to un uncover coins from underneath the uh, canal. Even more amazing perhaps is uh, motorbikes and cars. Um, they often find entire intact cars, uh, not just in the English canals, but uh, around the world. Any water body quite often has a car deposited in it. Um, one of the things I read about, and I know it's not a canal, but um, there's uh, in Hampstead Heath uh, in London, there's a lake and uh, it had to be drained for some reason. And when it was drained, they found a 1970s Ford Cortina, completely intact, that had been put there some years before. Nobody knows how long, nobody knows how, because the problem with this particular lake in Hampstead Heath is that there's no access road. Um, the nearest road is, is quite a way off. And if you were to drive onto the heath and aim for the the, the lake, you find your way barred by trees all the way around. Um, unless it was put there <laughs> long ago, very long ago, maybe there was a path through. But the truth is there isn't now and there hasn't been for a very long time. And if it was put there say in the 1970s the car would have been virtually brand new who's going to ditch a brand new car in the middle of Hampstead Heath where it can't be found strange goings on but uh, yeah apparently um, there's from my research there seem to have been uh, six cars intact cars found in the canal um, that people drive in there either by uh, accident or design uh, but also motor motorcycles, motorbikes, and scooters, motor scooters. Um, there were two found in this stretch of the uh, Canal Saint Martin that I mentioned before in Paris. Um, pizza delivery bikes, uh, and not only that, when they opened the um, the the box on the top of the the bike or at the rear of the bike, they found a soggy pizza inside. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Maybe somebody didn't want pineapple on theirs, I don't know. But the truth is that uh, they get stolen and ditched. And if you want to find somewhere where you're not going to sort of get caught for leaving it, I suppose the canal's a, a pretty good option. So, anyway, that's it from me uh, for another week. Um, it's been... Uh, a mixed sort of week. I've I've been trying to dodge the weather and get the things done that I needed to do, uh, shopping and laundry and stuff like that, just in case it turns bad. Also, uh, I needed to top up with water. Um, I can go for quite a long time uh, if I'm careful with uh, with fuel, but water you, uh, you just have to use it, don't you? Fortunately, it's quite a big tank. I think I mentioned before it's about 210 liters, which is quite a lot bigger than than some and water will last me a good couple of weeks but if I take the opportunity in between bad weather I can um, keep it nice and topped up so that you know if there is a period of time that I I'm gonna find it difficult to move on a canal at least I'm okay and in and in that way I'm keeping on top of uh, living by on the canals in the winter uh, it's not been a problem um, what else has happened this week? The diesel bug incident when my uh, engine seized up uh, was quite worrying, but I had every faith that the River and Canal Rescue, which is a really good institution, by the way, and if you do get yourself a bike, get as high a membership as you can. Membership of the River Canal Rescue came with my insurance for the boat. You've got to have the boat insured, and when you get it insured, uh, you get free membership uh, but the level of membership is the entry level so they'll come out to you but anything they do anything that they have to replace uh, you have to pay for I ended up getting a uh, platinum membership there is a level above God knows what it is emerald or or semi precious stone level I, I don't know what it's called but uh, I ended up with uh, platinum level 
and under platinum uh, all call outs are free unless that is that uh, it's something on the domestic side of the boat so anything from the bulkhead uh, in the engine room to the boat anything beyond that uh, you have to pay £50 for the call out um, because it's domestic they will come out they will try and fix it uh, but they will charge you um, when I had to pay that when I had my first problem that I called the Canal River Trust out to I had two fan belts at the back one is the fan belt for the engine battery that starts the engine one is the fan belt that charges up the domestic batteries because the fan belt that snapped was the one for the domestic batteries I had to pay 50 pounds because it was deemed to be on the domestic side of the boat which I thought was fair enough you know I mean I didn't have a, a fan belt he bought a fan belt with him um, I didn't have the tools to be able to make the adjustments and so on even if I had so uh, he came along fixed it I was up and running within an hour and a half which it's <laughs> the second time you know I've only used them twice and on both occasions 90 minutes later my problem has been solved um, the guy John that came this week to fix the problem absolutely brilliant went all the way through the fuel system checked everything uh, checked everything was okay and all it cost me was a fiver for a new filter and I think if you go to gold membership or whatever it is uh, you, you you, you, it's quite expensive as you'd expect but you don't have to pay for the parts uh, I think or you get some kind of discount on them but anyway uh, I was a happy bunny um, John came along sorted out my problem cost me a fiver jobs are good um, so yeah um, this week has been pretty much a, a standard domestic sort of living on a boat sort of week um, but I've managed really well we've had some rough weather we've had some cold weather but uh, here on the boat I'm pretty well uh, set up and it hasn't been a problem so anyway uh, I'm gonna love you and leave you till next time um, there's all sorts of things going on uh, not just the pandemic the, the pandemic is awful enough for so many people and uh, also you, you'll have noticed that uh, Captain Tom Moore uh, or Sir Captain Tom Moore um, recently died of COVID. Uh, he was an inspiration to us during the uh, the first lockdown. So um, uh, a lovely man. It's not like the world has got enough of them to to be able to spare a few, is it? So uh, I, I I was sad to see his passing. But um, there's also other stuff going on. Uh, I'm in regular contact with uh, somebody um, in Western Australia who lives in Perth and um, she's sending me pictures of some of the most devastating uh, bushfires that are occurring out there and also as a as an added interest my sister Carol and her partner Marty are out there um, and if you get to see this guys um, you know uh, just let us know you're safe because we we do worry about you I know you're a long way away but we do worry about you um, that's it guys that's all I've got for this week. Uh, I love all of you. And thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one. Bye guys.